I got all the parts I need to finish up the surge tank, at least the plumbing, and so that's what I'm going to be working on. I underestimated the number of fittings I need to do all the plumbing. I got the right number of fittings, but I expected to uh, use a lot of straight fittings, which I got the right amount, but I think for most of it, I'll need some sort of 45 or 90 degree fittings, and I definitely did not order enough of those, but I got everything now, so on to it. Going back to the bulkhead fittings or pass-through fittings, I initially had them installed this way and had the nut threaded down at the bottom over there. But what I think I'm going to do is flip them upside down. I think it just makes the profile a lot bit uh, tighter at the bottom and I need as much clearance as possible to avoid that spring and make sure the fuel line doesn't interfere with anything. Okay, I got these two or four torqued down. I'm doing all the crimping down here because it was hard to fish a line through enough as is without the connector. Uh, so now that I got them fished in, I'm not going to pull them back out and then crimp them because it would be a lot more difficult to uh, fish these lines through again uh, with these bulky things at the end of them. So that's why I'm down here uh, doing it uh, instead of like on a table or something. Uh, I already got one done. Uh, so I got three more to go. And yeah, just got to keep at it. enough this took longer than I wanted it to but I got everything screwed down or torqued down I had to play with the different combinations to um, make it fit the best as possible with as much clearance as possible uh, but uh, just took a lot of tries to uh, kind of get it the best uh, I can. I'm going to show you guys some different views on how everything got routed up. Here's directly underneath the car. The back of the car is uh, on this side or that way. Um, yeah, so this is all the lines coming from the bulkhead. Um, I'm pretty happy with the routing with the exception of this one. It kind of deviates from the rest of the line because it was uh, shorter than uh, it should have been so not the best clearance but I'll need to drop the car down to uh, make sure everything has sufficient clearance. Uh, I'm afraid of the lines hitting this piece of the suspension. So I'll drop her to the ground real quick and just to make sure uh, it looks okay-ish. Uh, I'm just following this. It kind of just goes uh, along the side of the tank and above it. So that's tucked up real nice. Again, just that one line that I'm concerned about. This one right here. What I did was jack the car up from one side to kind of give this wheel some squat so I could check the clearance 
underneath with the new fuel lines and unfortunately I already looked there isn't enough clearance and actually one of the lines the one that I was uh, concerned about is touching the suspension arm Additionally, I just think the fittings are a little too close for my comfort. I think what I need to do is have all the fittings point away from the arm. Uh, kind of hard to see, I guess. Um, but I think if I can find a way uh, okay, that's a better view. If I can find a way to rotate all the 90s away from the arm, I think it would give just more clearance to the point where I'm comfortable with. But unfortunately, if I do that, I may need to redo some of the lines. I will need more slack if I rotate them away from that arm. But it is what it is. Gonna just have to keep uh, working on it. Okay, it's cold out because I've been at this for a while now. Uh, costly a mistake. I had to recramp two hoses uh, because the new way I wanted to route them uh, had to be extended. So that took a second, and then I actually had to drill one more hole. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because I just wanted that safe clearance and reliability on the car uh, last thing you want to be doing on the track is spilling fuel everywhere or starting a fire uh, so uh, I did not want to take any chances so uh, I'm happy with it though um, I'm gonna show you um, the result uh, but definitely worth the time I think okay well here's the new uh, location for uh, one of the ports anyways uh, and you can see back there was the original hole uh, I had to move that closer this way because I just did not want anything uh, above that control arm just in case uh, the back squats uh, I did not want to crush uh, any of the fuel lines so uh, yeah I think it's worth it uh, what's one more hole uh, in this car there's so many damn holes anyways so I'm good with it and here's the result uh, pretty clean if you ask me uh, everything is away from this arm um, yeah it looks super neat um, and all the lines kind of go above the subframe here which shouldn't be moving so um, yeah nothing here so no worries about crushing uh, any fuel lines uh, this blue tape is there for a reason uh, that is where the fuel uh, pump from the search tank uh, feeds the fuel filter and it's the only one that uh, needs to be in the correct uh, port on the search tank all the rest of these lines uh, don't matter which uh, port they go to into the search tank just this guy the routing back here also clean lots of space now uh, very tidy uh, nothing of concern uh, to be uh, rubbing or being crushed by suspension components so happy with that as well I kind of position all of the fittings uh, to where I think I want them. Uh, so I'm just not crimping or tightening, uh, tightening anything right now, just kind of seeing how I should cut things. Something like that. I've also resorted back to using the handheld cutters 
uh, to cut the tube to make just things faster and less noisy late at night uh, but I still do support the hose a vice would be ideal but I'm just using a crescent just to help support it uh, and again I'm using these cutters and the purpose of the support is as the cutter squeeze this way the hose wants to go this way and the crescent kind of just helps minimize uh, how much pinching there is uh, when you use the handheld cutters if that makes sense Jesus So it still does get pretty crushed, but you can always form it back. It's not bad. Uh, and if it leaks, I'll let you guys know, but uh, I really don't think it's gonna cause an issue. And as you're peeling the blue tape off, again, it's there initially to kind of help with the fraying. It will still fray a little bit, but I was just thinking, so what if it frays? I mean, it's going to be like inside the fitting anyways, it gets tucked in there, so I kind of like hold down the sleeve as I remove the tape to further minimize fraying. But yeah, it's a little deformed. I think it's good enough. Okay, almost done. I uh, put all the lines together uh, I haven't finalized them I didn't put the ferrule or the uh, back of the fitting uh, just yet um, I ended up putting the 45 degrees in the back and the 90s um, in front uh, mainly because if they were all 90s they can't quite cross over to each other it will kind of just hit uh, and interfere with each other uh, and so I did the same thing for the back so I think this is what I'm gonna go with I was imagining something that looked a little cleaner and symmetric but uh, function over form I guess I am done Everything is tightened up and looking good. Hopefully there's no leaks. I'm finally done with all the plumbing for the surge tank. I'm so glad it's over because it took a while. I had to backtrack a little bit, uh, drill some extra holes, but um, I'm done for now. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably hook up the electrical so I could finally start her up until the next one